I'm joined now by Dr. Nasiru Gawuna, Deputy Governor of Kano State, is also the APC gubernatorial candidate. Thank you for joining us on the countdown. Let's begin with how you and your party are reacting to the suspension of the governorship election earlier scheduled to hold tomorrow. Uh, thank you for having me this evening. And uh, like you've said, uh, Myself and my party uh, are reacting very well to the postponement of the election. These are issues that can happen at any time. And uh, for people that are prepared and are ready for elections, don't have to worry about uh, these kind of issues. And uh, we are trying our best to see that. Come 18th of March, we are ready for the election and uh, we'll continue to do our best to see that we have uh, won the election. Your Excellency, some would say the presidential election result in Kano must have unsettled your party. The NNPP won with more than 56% of the total vote cast. They got two out of the three senatorial seats and 17 out of the 24 House of Reps. Uh, this must put your must have put your party in a really difficult position. How are you reacting to that? Well, uh, if somebody is upset about this kind of uh, issues, I think uh, he needs to check his uh, uh, mindset about politics. Politics is like that, and uh, the presidential candidate of NNPP uh, is uh, from Kano State. And uh, definitely, there is going to be a lot of sentiment when it comes to voting. But uh, the APC presidential candidate uh, got his uh, the required percentage uh, that he needs in Kano State, and the votes are overwhelming. And uh, when you look at the permutation of uh, the the votes, you will now find out that uh, the APC candidate who is our president-elect, Alaji Ibola Ahmed Tinubu, uh, is the one ahead in Kano because when you look at the other votes in other states where the NNPP presidential candidate uh, got, uh, it's like Kano is being won by the uh, APC presidential candidate. And so we are not worried about that. and. Uh, we are working hard, and uh, people will see what will happen when it comes to the next election, that is the gubernatorial and the state assembly election, come 18th March. Some say this election is perhaps the most keenly contested in Kano history, and it's seen uh, by some as a direct contest between Kwan Kwanso uh, of the NNPP and, and your principal, the governor of Kano, Abdullahi Ganduje, who you know, both of them will not have served as governor and deputy twice. Would you say that you and other candidates in this contest are being adequately evaluated if those who are not on the ballot are seen as the main contenders? Well, I see, you can say whatever they think. I think that's their opinion. But I think people should look at the... Uh, the credentials and the credibility of the candidates that are participating in this election, not only uh, the APC or the NNPP, but other parties as well, because our election is by God. Uh, there are a lot of indices that one has to look at. First, you look at your credibility, you look at your uh, your, your, your stand, or you look at your experience when it comes to governance and what you have done. Uh, these are indices that are going to be looked at and people will judge based on that and then elect people in office. I've always said that I have the requisite experience of uh, governance, which uh, started as a local government chairman, my own local government chairman, Nasarawa, which is uh, the biggest local government, not only in Kano, but in the country, uh, in terms of uh, population and what have you. 
And uh, I have that experience. I have governed my local government and my people in Kano State can judge me for that. And I have the experience to work with uh, Governor Mala Ibrahim Sheikharaw then. And then I subsequently, I was uh, in the cabinet of Indian Arabi Musa Konkosu when he came for the second time after the merger. He picked me as a commissioner and uh, he knows the reason why he picked me and we served well with him. After that, then my principal at the moment, uh, Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje, picked me as a commissioner and when the chance I came, he made me his deputy governor and then we get into election again. And as a deputy governor now, I think I have garnered a lot of experience that can be able to put me ahead which I think all the contestants that are contesting in all the parties, mm. there is nobody has that have these records uh, ahead of me. So these are indices that one can look at and uh, think. And I have a cordial relationship between all these governors. I don't uh, have any problem with any one of them. And even in my state, I encourage peaceful coexistence between people and parties. And uh, I stand to be corrected if there is any candidate that is doing that in Kano now to prove it. Mm. But like I told you, elections are by God. Dr. It's, Gawuda, am, you, you, you just talked about your relationship with Senator Shekarao. Can you, can you confirm social media reports that uh, the senator is working with your party ahead of the governorship election. We saw a picture of him and the Kano State governor trend earlier. No, that I cannot say. Uh, I don't know. But that shows relationships are always uh, better because you can win elections, you can make uh, finish your tenure, but relationships are supposed to be kept well. Even if Shekaro is in another party, and we are in another party with my principal, that does not mean they cannot correlate together. They are all, uh, Shekaro was a former governor for eight years, and uh, Ganduje is now almost finishing his eight years. Mm. There is no reason why we should correlate. And this is uh, an example showing people that, uh, I mean, follow us, that we should try as much as possible to maintain relationship between ourselves at the bottom, because at the top, you will find out whatever happened, uh, leaders are coming together mm. to share uh, to share whatever they, they do together. So there is no need for animosities. There is no need for... I hear you, Deputy uh, Governor. We have, we have a few more minutes. Let me just squeeze in a few more questions so that we can get more before we go. Uh, you have been talking a lot about your promise for the people of Kano one of which is giving autonomy yeah. to the local government uh, uh, if you are elected as governor. How difficult has that yeah. been since being a deputy governor since 2018? Why do you think it will be different if you become governor? It's not difficult. I have been a local government chairman for eight, uh, uh, six years or seven years because I have served my tenures, two tenures, and then I have been appointed as an administrator. So I know what local government is, and during that time, I've been given all the chances, and I know what local governments are. And so there is uh, no reason why, as a former local government chairman, I will not give autonomy to uh, the local government chairman. Mm. This will do with adequate supervision with those that are supervising the local government, that is the state assembly, adequately, if God destined me to be the governor, and then I'm sure that if the local government will do what they are supposed to do, there is going to be a lot of synergy between the states and the local government. And then there is going to be much desired development to the people of the state. Finally, Deputy Governor, let's talk about security ahead of the election. Because the police in Kano say they are aware of plans by some politicians to import thugs into the state in order to disrupt the election. And the opposition parties are already accusing you 
and your government of being behind this? How do you react? Well, I can react by saying that, okay, those that have already, who that have done that, will be safe. Because the police has promised us that they will do all that they can to obtain that. So we'll see who is the person that have employed or that have deployed thugs from other places to Kano. We, as a party and as a government, Kano State has been secured for a very long time. From 2015 till date, Kano has remained peaceful in all ramifications, both in religious and ethnic uh, violence. There was no occurrence, no single occurrence of that. And then when it comes to the issue of uh, terrorism or the issue of uh, uh, kidnapping and what have you, Kano has been very peaceful. And so somebody that has done that will not do anything to sabotage uh, his state. And I'm telling you that this is uh, elections are not a do or die affair. There is no reason. I see no reason why somebody will deploy the use of thugs simply because of election. Definitely, whoever is elected will sit, serve his tenure, and he will leave the city. The remaining, he will meet God. God will definitely judge people that have done that. And the police and the, all the security agencies have assured us that they will not leave anything in turn when it comes to making sure that the 18th March election that is coming up has been peaceful. And I pray that it will be very, very peaceful and that whoever, whoever deployed any talk to be ready to answer the law. We're following the Kano state governorship election very closely. And just like you said, we're also hopeful for a peaceful poll. Dr. Nasiru Gawuna, Deputy Governor, Kano State, and APC governorship candidate. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, I hope we'll have a peaceful election in the whole country, inshallah. Thank you.